Hi my dear students, welcome to the next video. Hope you all are fine and enjoying good health. In the previous video, we started the algorithm for Q insertion. Okay, algorithm for Q insertion. How we are inserting a new element into the queue and what are the speciality of rear end in queue insertion and also we see the algorithm for queue insertion. Okay, when we are inserting an element into the queue, we are incrementing the value of rear by rear plus one and after that we are storing that value into the rear position. Okay, then Q uses FIFO technique. FIFO technique means first in, first out manner. So that's why whenever we are performing or whenever we are inserting an element, that means the first element is deleting first. Okay, then in this video, we are continuing the operations on Q. The second operations on Q is deletion. So in this section, we will discuss the algorithm for deletion and also we will discuss a special type of Q called circular Q. And what is the important of importance of circular Q in data storage purpose? Okay, so these are the two topics that we are going to discuss in this video. Q deletion algorithm and also the concept circular Q. Okay, so here already the deletion algorithm is given. In this algorithm, I already mentioned in Q, deletion operation is taking place at the front end. Okay, deletion operation taking place at front end. Okay, then. So here, when... Suppose this is a Q 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so now in this situation, is there any element present in this Q? No. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That means the total size of the Q is 4. But in this, there is no element present. That means friend is equal to minus 1 and rear equal to minus 1. So when we are performing a deletion operation, you want to check the underflow condition first. Okay, which condition? Underflow condition you want to check first. What is the condition underflow? Underflow means to an empty queue, we are attempting a deletion operation that will lead to an unfavorable condition. That condition is known as underflow. So before the deletion operation, you want to check whether the queue is empty or not. Okay, what do you want to check? You want to check the underflow condition. So this is given as the first step in Q deletion algorithm. You want to check whether friend greater than minus 1. That means friend should be greater than minus 1. It should not equal to minus 1. If it is minus 1 that indicates Q is empty, we can't perform deletion operation. So if the condition is false, that means friend less than here it is greater than minus one if it is not greater than if it is less than minus one then what will happen the else part will execute what is the else part q underflow so what is the condition for q underflow friend is equal to minus one and then we are attempting a deletion operation then it is known as q underflow condition so you can for your examination, this kind of question will come. What will be the condition for Q underflow? What will be the condition if friend equal to minus 1 and then we are attempting a deletion operation, it will lead to underflow condition. So before deletion, you want to check the underflow condition. What is the underflow condition? If friend greater than minus 1, then value is equal to Q of friend. Okay, if it is greater than minus 1, that means... Uh, some elements may be present. So, whichever element is present. So, in this example, 5, 6, 8. Okay. Three elements present in this queue. So, what will be the uh, uh, value for front? The first element. What is the first element? 5. So, the front will always points to the first element. That is to the 0th location. So, whichever element present at the 0th location will be assigned to the variable value. So, first we are assigning the value present at front into value. And after that, we are incrementing the value of friend equal to friend plus 1. That is the third condition. Friend equal to friend plus 1. We are incrementing the value of friend equal to friend plus 1. So, the initial value of friend was 0. And then or after the deletion, it will change to 1. 
okay immediately after the deletion it will change to one then after that i already mentioned if it is if the condition is not satisfying then we will get the message called print q underflow condition so this is the first condition so before a deletion you want to check the underflow condition if in underflow condition we are checking whether front is equal to front greater than minus 1 then second condition if you want to check whether we are deleting the last element last element means 8 that means 18 okay here it is the last element suppose uh, only uh, one element is present in the queue that means all these locations are empty. Only one element is present. Okay, only one element on this is the last element of the queue. For checking the last element, the condition is friend greater than rear. That means friend should be greater than rear. Then friend is equal to rear equal to minus 1. What does that value indicate? Friend equal to rear equal to minus 1. If Friend is pointing to the last element. We are deleting the last element. Okay. After deleting the last element, then what will happen? Q will become empty. So, so for representing empty Q, we are writing the condition friend is equal to rear is equal to minus 1. Okay. Friend equal to rear equal to minus 1. If we are deleting the last element, then the condition will be friend equal to rear equal to minus 1. Clear? So, in deletion operation or in queue deletion operation, you want to check two conditions. First condition is you want to check whether the queue is empty or not. Second condition is you want to check whether you are deleting the last element. Okay, so for the first step for queue deletion is if friend greater than minus 1, but it's the first condition. If friend greater than minus 1, then you can assign the value present at friend into a variable called value. That's why value is equal to Q of friend. Okay, whichever element is present at the friend position, we are assigning that to the variable value. Then after that, third location. Third step. What is the third step? Friend is equal to friend plus 1. Okay, what is it? Friend is equal to friend plus 1. We are incrementing the value of friend is equal to friend plus 1. After that, if the condition is false. Okay, if the condition is false, then we can't perform deletion operation. So, we will get a message print Q underflow. Okay, then after that, second condition. We are checking whether we are deleting the last element. Okay, whether we are deleting the last element. In this condition, all the elements were removed except the last element. So, for checking the last element, the condition is friend greater than rear. Seventh step. If friend greater than rear, that means we are focusing the last element. So, if you remove the last element, then what will happen? Friend, friend equal to rear equal to minus 1. We are making a Q as empty. Clear? Hope you understood the algorithm for Q insertion. So in this uh, in this term that means Q deletion, you can expect two questions. First question is write the algorithm for Q deletion. Okay, that will be the first question. Second question, specify the condition for Q underflow. Okay, specify the condition for Q underflow. What will be the condition for Q underflow? If friend greater than or oh, friend equal to minus one, that means Q is empty, we can't insert a L or we can't delete element from this Q because it's already empty. If you are attempting a deletion operation to an empty Q, it will lead to underflow condition. So, for your examination, underflow and overflow condition relating to any of the data structure. It can, that means it may be stack or Q. Okay, anyone or uh, if you get a question, explain the underflow and overflow condition on a particular data structure. So, you can write stack underflow and overflow condition. Otherwise, you can write Q underflow and also overflow condition. So, it's very, very important question overflow and uh, underflow condition along with the Q deletion operation. Okay, clear. Then. In this uh, Q insertion and also deletion, uh, we are using front end and also Rear end. Insertion taking place at rear end and deletion taking place at front end. Okay, then uh, there are so many uh, disadvantages also present for this queue. 
Okay, insertion and deletion. That means in this example, I deleted the element. That means uh, the last element is 18. Okay, so de I deleted all the elements, first element, second element, third element, only last element will be there. Then, but in this situation, we can't insert an element to the first location because we already inserted one element and that we deleted, but now this space is empty. But after reaching the maximum, we can't insert an element into the queue. Okay, that means some of the space will be kept as unused. So we can't insert an element already. That means already we inserted one item like this. 5, 6, 7, 8. So suppose I want to delete an element from this queue. I will delete the element 5 first. After that I can delete the element 6, then 7, then after that 18. So after deleting 5, 6 and 7, the positions 0, 1, 2. These all are vacant. Okay, these all are vacant. Suppose you want to insert a new item into the queue. It will not be possible because this is already occupied by rear end. So we, that means already one element is inserted and already one element also deleted from this. So we can't insert element to this uh, member. That means into this location. Actually, this is a drawback of queue. So, for overcoming this drawback, one more queue is present that is called circular queue. Okay, one more uh, queue is present that is called circular queue. Circular queue is a special type of queue. In this, the front end and rear end combines to form a circle. For example, this is a sample queue. Sample queue means it consists of five elements. Okay, so here I'm going to insert some elements into the queue. Five, then 16, 19, 22, 25. Okay, so in this situation, now what will be the value of front and what will be the value of rear? Okay, so in this situation 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So the value of rear because rear reaches the maximum value of rear equal to 4. Then what will be the value of front? The first element we are deleting first. So the value of front will be 0. So I am going to delete the first element from this queue. First element from the queue. That means I am going to delete the element 5. Okay, I'm going to delete the element 5 from this location. Okay, so what will happen? The initial value of front was 0. After deleting the value, it will change to 1. Okay, then, then 16 will be the first element. So again, I am in uh, deleting one more element. So what will happen? The 16 will remove from this and the value of front will be 2. Then, in this queue, already 2 uh, positions are vacant 0 and 1 then suppose I want to insert an element into the queue is it possible no it's not possible because rear reaches the maximum value because rear is at the last location so we can't restart insertion from 0 to location actually this is a drawback of queue okay because when rear reaches the maximum Okay, when rear reaches the maximum, we can't perform an insertion operation. Okay, we can't perform insertion operation. So, in order to avoid this drawback, there is one more concept is present that is called circular queue. In circular queue, front and rear end is interconnected to form a circle. Okay, the same uh, queue I can draw in a circle format. Okay, it consists of five elements. One, then two, three, four and five. So I am going to write the memory location. Zero, one, two, three, four and five. Okay, locations are present. So here I am going to use the same approach. Here, in the zero the location, if it is... 5, then six, uh, first location 16, 
22 then fourth location 25 so now this q is full then what will be the value of rear what will be the value of rear rear is equal to 4 and front is equal to 0 okay i deleted the first two elements 5 and 16 then what will be the value of front Okay, once I really, uh, deleted the first two elements, 0 and 1, then the value of front will be 2. Then, suppose I want to insert one more item into this queue. Is it possible? If it is a circular queue, it's possible. Okay, now the value of front is equal to 4. When front reaches the maximum value, it will interchange the value of rear into 0. So that means we can perform insertion one more time. Okay. Because here the value of rear, when the value of rear reaches the maximum, it will rearrange to 0. Okay. In case of front also, if reaches or front reaches a maximum called 4, that means the value 25 deleted. 25 is the last element. If the last element is deleted, then it will be termed as uh, empty queue. But immediately after the insertion, we can insert one more element into the location, 0th location we can insert. So when we inserted using circular queue, that element also we can delete. So the speciality is in circular queue, the rear end and front end interconnected to form a circular format. Okay, then if rear reaches the maximum value or at the last location, there is a possibility of interchanging the value of rear into zero. Okay, it is interchanging by zero. Friend also we can rearrange to zero. Okay, it's possible in circular queue. This is one of the main advantage of circular queue. We can rearrange the value of rear and also front. Okay, so there will be no memory wastage if we are using circular queue. So this is the main advantage for circular queue. We can interchange the value of queue and front into zero. That means we can rearrange the value of queue and front into zero. This is the speciality of circular queue. Okay, hope you understood the concept of circular queue. So again, we will revise the topics that we studied. So we started with queue deletion operation in queue deletion operation uh, we start but first in queue deletion first we want to check under flow condition okay but in uh, after that you want to check whether it is in the last location or last element if it is the last element then what will happen it will uh, rear change the value of front equal to rear equal to minus 1. Then after that circular queue. Actually in circular queue the elements are arranged normally in queue elements are arranged in row or line. The two ends of such queues have never meet at any point. Is there any joining point for front and rear in normal queue? No. There is a drawback in linear queue. Actually this is the drawback. But in circular queue the front end and rear end joins to form a circular format. So that's why that Q is known as circular Q. Okay, that's why that Q is known as circular Q. Clear? So hope you understood this. Then you want to write one question in your notebook that is, write the algorithm for Q deletion in your notebook. Then I already mentioned when you are writing the algorithm, you want to write the comments also. The first step is for what condition? For checking the empty status checking, whether uh, the queue contains uh, a value or not. And the next condition is for checking the last element, availability of the last element. If it is the last element, then we are changing value of front is equal to rear equal to minus one. Okay. So by this, the concept of queue is over. Okay, Q also a linear data structure and it's also a static data structure. For implementing Q, we are using array concept. Okay, so the two linear data structure sections is over, stack and Q. The remaining one more data structure is present that is called linked list. Linked list is a dynamic data structure that also you want to discuss. 
okay so that we will discuss in the next video hope you all are completed your notes and also studied all the algorithms of stack and also queue okay it's very very important it's a sure question for your board examination please prepare uh, your note uh, me that means neatly always if you are writing the algorithm please include comments also okay uh, then the remaining section that means the linked list and also the operations on linked list we will discuss in the next video okay then thank you